Hey everyone, Dana Leslie back for another Disney dining review. This one is gonna be a little bit different than what you're used to. We are headed to Epcot today to see John Stamos, <laughs> um, <laughs> but really to go to the Candlelight Processional where John Stamos is the narrator uh, for the evening. I am so excited. We love, 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 love the Candlelight Processional. Um, so this dining review is about the Candlelight Processional dining package. We are gonna talk about the different options, what you can do, what you can book, what we are doing. We are going to, instead of reviewing the actual restaurant we're going to, so we're going to um, the UK Pavilion and we're gonna eat at Rose and Crown, but we've already done a review on Rose and Crown. Um, if you wanna see that, go check that out. What we're gonna review is is the actual overall dining package, why you would want to do this, what it entails, what it costs, the different options from the different restaurants in and around Epcot, and all of everything in between. Um, and then when we go to Epcot, we will be actually reviewing the Candlelight Processional itself. I'm very, very excited about this. This is probably one of the, our favorite things to do at the holiday time every year. Before we start talking about the Candlelight Processional itself, Let's talk about the other dining packages you can do because basically with every single festival at Epcot, you are able to do one of these dining packages. So for Festival of the Arts, they always bring in Broadway stars and have performances. You could do a dining package there. Uh, for a garden, a Flower and Garden Festival, there is the Garden Rocks concert. And then for Food and Wine, it is Eat to the Beat. And so all of those have dining packages available. Full disclosure, we have not ever done a dining package for another performance because with those performances, we always kind of prefer to like grab a drink at Regal Eagle area and like just kind of sit back behind the crowd and listen. But with the with the Candlelight Processional, because it's this celebrity narrator, the 50 piece orchestra and the choir telling the story of you know, the Bible of Christmas, it, you can't, you miss a lot if you're sitting back that far. And so we like to be up close. Yeah, so we don't really think it is necessary to get the uh, dining packages for those other concerts. And they're honestly pretty easy to get. The Candlelight Processional dining packages are very competitive, especially for the narrators that are very, very popular. <laughs> uh, Neil Patrick Harris, NPH, is always a popular narrator. He is there pretty much every year. We saw him last year. Here's a little bit with him doing his Candlelight Processional from last year. And all went each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. <laughs> For you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. We love Neil Patrick Harris, yes. um, and that was a fun one, but we wanted to see someone different this year. So this year we're going to two uh, narrators. So we're going to John Stamos tonight, uh, just us two. We're actually going with some friends. Here in a week, um, all four of us, our family of four, are going to see Brendan Fraser. So Neil Patrick Harris, um, someone that like Brendan Fraser, a movie star that just won an Oscar, um, like those are gonna be very, very popular candlelight processional narrators. So if you wanna see them, make sure that you book them as soon as as possible. Also to know, um, it is not only um, it is not only competitive to get these dining packages. You have to get the candlelight processional dining package, which Leslie is about to talk about. You can't just make a reservation at these restaurants. So once you get into my Disney experience and you're looking at the advanced dining reservations, if you see a reservation available for a restaurant for one of these nights, it 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 doesn't matter. Like even if you book it, that's not gonna get you this dining package. You have to physically go into select the dining package, then see what's available under that. Um, because if you don't get it under the dining package, then you're not going to get in. First, do you have to have a dining package in order to attend this event? You do not, but it makes it much, much easier. So this is important to know. So um, if you don't wanna eat at a restaurant, um, then 
whatever, you can stand in line for a long time, or you can do like what we do with the other festivals and just enjoy the ambiance. You can still hear the candlelight processional, but it is not the same as being front and center and having that choir and the trumpets and the orchestra and the narrator right there. It just is such a cool experience. Mm -hmm. But if you don't really care about that, you can listen to the candlelight processional from across the promenade. There are three candlelight processional performances in the evenings. So you can get in line for one of those, but, but that line starts getting pretty long. And if you're not at the front of it, you're probably not gonna get in. I mean, it's just, it's very, very hard to get in. So highly, highly, highly recommend getting a dining package if you want to. Definitely if you wanna get a seat underneath the cover of that pavilion in the America um, Adventure area of Epcot. Um, this is, this is the way to do it. Yeah, I would say that if you don't have a dining package and you want a seat, you probably need to get in line upwards of maybe an hour and a half to two hours before the show. I mean, in Neil Patrick, Patrick Harris. Oh, some of those, there are, people are gonna be camping out. As soon as they the open the line, get yeah. out. Yeah. Um, so there are two lines. Uh, as you're looking into the amphitheater where the candlelight processional happens, on the right-hand side, um, that is the standby queue if you don't have a dining package line. On the left-hand side, that is gonna be the line, there is still a line, that is gonna be the line once you um, have gone to your dining, uh, once you have gone to your meal um, and you are ready to get in line for the dining package, get in line there. Um, but they will let all of those people in first. So you, will, if you have a dining package and you're in that line, you will get in before any of the standby queue. You can get in the dining package line, I mean, ahead of time still, like we probably will still go 45 minutes or so ahead of time. Um, they will start letting in the standby line to fill in all the extra seats about 15 minutes before showtime. So keep that in mind that you'll definitely wanna be in the line for the dining package um, people before that 15 minutes, whenever they start letting everybody else in. It's interesting. So tonight, our candlelight positional time is the last one. So we'll, we'll actually be standing in line and watch the choir and everybody leave the yeah. amphitheater. Um, then the amphitheater will empty and then they will let us in. And then the choir and everything will come back in by the time um, it is ready to start. There are eight different places you can eat at. Um, if you go to Spice Road Table, um, at that location in particular, each person gets two small plates and one non-alcoholic beverage, and then the table gets a ta tagine, I believe is what they're called, as well as a dessert platter to share. So that's kind of how Spice Sword Table works. All the other restaurants, however, each person gets an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert, or one full buffet or family style meal if that if you're eating at a place like that, as well as a non-alcoholic beverage. So all these packages are prefix prices. They are gonna be a little bit more expensive um, than if you were just to eat there without this dining package. However, um, based off of our experience, it is worth it just to be able to get in and have the excellent seats. Yes. Now you have to actually go and attend the yes. dining reservation and yes. pay. And then at the, whenever you get your bill, like at the end and after you've paid, that's when you actually get your little vouchers that provide you a seat in the dining package for the candlelight procession. We have known multiple people that have made the reservations correctly under, like, under the candlelight processional dining package and then just not gone. Um, and then showed up to the restaurant and, and asked if they could just get their ticket. And they're like, no, you have <laughs> to come to the reservation, sit down, eat, pay, then you get yes. your ticket. So just make sure you understand you have to eat there. Yeah. Um, now there are, they are doing same day packages if they're available. So they basically take any of the leftover stock and they send it over to Regal Eagle on that day. And it's first come first serve over there. So it's not a guarantee. I would not count on that if you absolutely want somebody, but if you weren't able to get a dining reservation and you want to try, then I would show up as early as possible and go to Regal Eagle as soon as it opens. You have Akershus, um, you've got Beer Garden, Coral Reef, Garden Grill, Le Cellier, Regal Eagle for the same day packages that I just mentioned, Rose and Crown, and Spice Road Table. Um, basically the prices are gonna vary anywhere from, Regal Eagle for that same day package is $41 per person, so that's gonna be your least expensive option, but everything else ranges anywhere from 55 
to $104 per person. That's Le Cellier. So that's yes. the steakhouse in Canada. Um, so that's going to be the most expensive dining package. Um, my favorite is probably going to be Beer Garden because it's mm. a show within a show. So you yeah. get the candlelight processional, but then um, Beer Garden itself has a show inside the restaurant. Go back and watch that review. In fact, it was for the candlelight processional, our review yes. last year. So yeah. that was that was the candlelight processional. And so it's a show in the, within a show, plus you get a, an excellent buffet over there. That's what there. we're doing with the kids. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Rose and Crown is good too, though. Yes. Also, reservations open up just like the regular advanced dining reservations, yes. right? So just because you hear, like if you're coming over Christmas time, they will announce, okay, candlelight processional dining packages are open. But if you're not going within 60 days from when they open, just wait. And then as soon as that 60 day window opens for your day then or your, or your stay, then you'll be able to book it, assuming there's availability left. Yes. Finally, um, I do want to re reiterate something that Leslie said already. This is the Christmas story read from the Bible. Mm -hmm. It is all of your traditional Christmas carols. Um, it is very Christian based. So just make sure that is what you want to um, be a part of whenever you're scheduling this uh, candlelight dining procession. Mm. That reminds me, I need to grab some tissues before we go because I was without them last time. <laughs> okay. Speaking of going, our reservation is in less than an hour and we should probably get going. I want to be late for this <laughs> one. I do not want to be late for Mr. John Stavos. So are you ready? Yes. Let's do this. traditionally candlelight processional at Disneyland over 60 years ago. Caitlin, my wife's love for Disney runs so deep that if you check his birth certificate, it reads Billy Flynn, Fauna, Huey, Dewey, Louie, Daisy, Mowgli, Pooh, Aku, Tigger, Tiger, Bob, Iger, Lilo, Stamos. If you would have told that young boy that one day he'd be on this stage narrating the candlelight processional at Disney World, I just wouldn't have believed it. I really wouldn't. And if you also would have told me that I'd lose one of my best friends, Bob Saget, in the blink of an eye, I wouldn't believe that either. But here I am still processing the deep sense of sin. And while they were there, time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. Christ found it in his earthly heart to give of himself 
to the people who loved him and even to the people who betrayed him, to all people, that a baby in a manger could grow to become a man who taught a world of people what it means to love one another. That is the spirit of this season. And it lives inside each and every one of us. The greatest joy of being a human is to love one another. And when we share that love, that is the greatest gift of all. We are back, and sister missed us. <laughs> she did. <laughs> okay, John Stamos was fantastic. He got like very emotional, very heartfelt. He talked about Bob Saget at one point. He just—it <laughs> was just—he got choked up a couple of times. It was—it was a very emotional, powerful candlelight processional. It was, so we got to Epcot. Security was a nightmare because Disney security is awful. Um, <laughs> and I mean, literally, like, I was in security line for 15 minutes. And at one point, like I walk up to get my camera bag check and the guy turned around and left and took a break. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, we're doing this apparently. So all of it to say, once we got through security, we made it to our Rose and Crown reservation. So as we mentioned before, these are prefix menus. So we got to choose one appetizer, one entree, and one dessert. Um, the dinner was good. Very good quality, good company. It's a lot of food. Very slow. So, so slow. So the moral of the story here is to just tell your server that you need to speed it up a little bit. She knew that we were going to the A30 show and had the Candlelight Processional Package, but I don't think she realized kind of like that you needed to get in line a little bit yeah. before the show. So I, we, I really was aiming to be in that line an hour ahead of time. We say a minimum of 45 minutes ahead of time, and that's absolutely true. I think an hour for a, a high profile, highly popular person, yeah. narrator like John Stamos, uh, definitely an hour. We got in line like 30 minutes, like right at 30 minutes prior to the show, and the line was already, so, the, so what happens is it snakes, and it snakes in front of, uh, so from the amphitheater in, what is it, the garden, Something theater. American Gardens Theater. American Gardens Theater. From there, it's it goes in front of uh, Japan. It snakes around in there, and then it goes down to Morocco. And on the way to Morocco, it snakes a couple times in front of you know going towards Morocco. And it was just at the entrance of Morocco we got into it after the second snake. And by the time they started letting people in, it was past Spice Road table. I don't even know how far back it went. It was crazy. It was a long ways. Anyway, all that to say. All of those people were just people with the dining package. Yeah. And they let all of us in and fill the stadium before they even open the standby line. So yeah. I don't know, I don't even know if they opened the standby line because there were so many of us. There's a lot, but there's a lot of seats in there. there we are. actually got a decent seat. We were we towards the front, but off to one side. Um, side note, they uh, have the trumpet, the <laughs> herald trumpets, herald trumpets? Whatever, the long trumpets yeah. that are, you know, the fanfare trumpets. They're fantastic. Um, they're fantastic, but they are on either side of you. So if you're on the, the ends, like towards the stained glass windows in there, you get some loud trumpeteers in your ears. So just yeah. know that's a thing. They're um, really good though. <laughs> but yeah, we felt like, I felt like we had great seats. Yeah, we did. We had good seats. We, you know, and it, it just, the whole show is so good. I mean, if you... It really, it just brings that whole other level of Christmas to the parks and I, I just love it. The show is about 45 to 50 minutes long. 
itself and then they have to clear the theater out yeah, and I think we started up a few minutes late. So anyway, we so as we so we clear the theater and as we were coming around France, the 9:30 showing of uh, Epcot Forever was going off. Yeah. So Candlelight Processional, highly 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 recommended if you want to see the show, if you like what you saw there, um, definitely get the dining package. Um, you know, it's well worth it. So good. All right, if you are liking these videos, please hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. And we will see you on the next video.